faith is an amazing mystery because if it were only up to the words that we speak and the expressions or actions of our faith, supposed faith, quote and unquote, it would be easily weighed and understood or estimated by many. But it's not quite so. If you've been in the faith for some time, you'll realize that not everybody who says, I have defeated it in Jesus' name, really defeats it. Not everybody who says, in Jesus' name, by next year, I will have a car, will drive it. In Jesus' name, by next week, I buy this property, will we'll, we'll buy it. In the name of Jesus, my child, my children are coming, my womb is opening, we'll have an open womb. Faith has been designed to give that answer. But not everybody who professes this faith will actually suppose it what and I put that in quotes faith will actually have the results of the faith that they profess in quotes because not all we call faith is actually faith that is why even in its simplicity it's one of the deepest mysteries to be demystified it might look stupid but it's telling Joshua I'm going to open that sea I'm going to part it. But wait to, to the water, go to the river bank and stand there. Let the anointed lead the group. All I need is if their feet touch the edge of the river, I will part it. The moment their feet touch the water, the flow of the water will be cut off upstream and the river will stand up like a wall. But the feet must that first step. Now you have people who are who are going to walk before that 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 river. Father, in Jesus' name, let this river part. Nothing. It has not worked. Why? Because they move by physical evidence. And God says, here is the wisdom. There are things that will never work until you put that foot next to the water. And the moment it touches the water, it will part. You didn't get it? Let me explain. You want to build a house. You will never get the money until you go to a hardware and buy one bag of cement. One bag. Then you put it on the ground. That's when you'll see money coming. In the... I, listen, I have a sermon one day I will preach. I've not, I, I'm, I'm just gaining enough time and words. But I've given some of you a clue. I remember one time my father sat me down and told me, but my son, do you have an enslaved spirit on you? You look like a slave. And it sank on, it sank actually. You know, there are people who are working 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. jobs, but they have a spirit of slavery on them. If I had time, I could teach about it and prove it. Because everything the Egyptian went through under Pharaoh, you're leaving it, except that you have a tie and you enter a bank every morning and sit before a till. Especially if you're the kind who, with all your labor, you can only manage just to buy yourself food and pay your rent. You're under the spirit of slavery. Because what's different between you and the Egyptian, the, the Jew under the Egyptian? They worked and ate watermelon and leeks and fish 
and they had a place to sleep. What's the difference? You get it? I wish I had time to teach about it, but I don't have time. This, there, I can show you cues in the scripture that can prove to you that some of you are working in some of the highest offices, but you carry that spirit that enslaved the Jew in Egypt. My father one time said it to me. He was a prophetic man. When he said it, the vision came. I knew what the man went, meant. Six years, nothing in my name. But I'm banking every day. I'm putting on ties and shirts. And people look at me and say, wow, this guy's a banker. Wow. Some women were even dreaming to marry bankers. Whoa. <laughs> marry a slave. <laughs> Listen. Listen. I went to God and I asked him, I asked him questions on wealth. I wanted to build wealth the godly way because there are many ways you can build wealth. But I, I knew the Bible was clear that we shall build wealth. It was very clear that it is the blessing of Lord that the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. He gives us power, he says, to make wealth that he might establish the covenant that he made with our fathers. So I ask God ultimately the question, God, I see wealthy people and there are many ways people can build wealth, but I want to build wealth your way. And then the Lord began to teach me, and teach me, and teach me, and teach me, and teach me. The moment I understood this, I'll preach it one day, but it would require a whole hour because I want to show you principle and pattern, principle and pattern on building godly wealth, right? Then, after helping me understand this for a couple of months, he now told me, make your first step. I went on my account, and I looked at the account, I laughed at it, I went on Ginger Road, entered an Indian shop, looked at every electronic, and I saw a small-sized microwave, an LG. I had enough money for it. It was 370,000 shillings then. 370, I believe, or something like that very small paid for it we used to sleep in the boys quarters me opposite my brother I got that microwave I put it in the corner I said God this is my first step this is the proof that everything I need in this world I will buy eh eh evening I came back into the house before I slept, I used to walk to my microwave and I would tell it, we are going places. We are going to build four, five, six level buildings. I sleep. Next day, I come to my microwave. The best cars, Mercedes Benzes, we are driving it. The Range Rovers, we are driving them. Me and you, you're my point of contact. I spoke to the microwave and I spoke to the microwave and I spoke to the microwave with the microwave. You understand? But it was my step of faith. There is no, oh my God, if it's cars, I drive the best. I mean, God has done me so good. 2024, I still have my LG microwave. It's in the deepest part of my office. There. Sometimes when I'm overwhelmed, I go back and I say, ha, ha, ha. we come from far. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you just need to make one step of faith. Maybe it is the time you went to buy a gown before even a man proposed to you. Maybe this is a time for you to sit in a car and start looking around land asking how much it costs even when your landlord called you last week because he wants money.
There was a lady I found back in those first years when I understood this principle. She was called Barbara. Sister to a young lady called Betty. Among the first disciples I had, Barbara was barren. She wasn't having children. She came to me and says, Apostle, I prayed five, six years, seven years, I want a child. I told Barbara, first step, what do you want? Do you want a boy, girl? She says, boy, let's go buy clothes. Come on now. Let's go buy what? Clothes, first step. We bought blue clothes. Few months from the time we bought those clothes, Barbara calls me, Apostle, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. Hallelujah. Uh, the boy came. Hallelujah. What are you talking about? That is why the Bible finds a barren woman and says, first step. Sing, O oh barren woman. Who got it? That's what the Bible says. He says, sing, first step, O oh barren woman. Ask your neighbor, what's your expression of faith? What is your first step to leave renting? What is your first step to buy the car? What is your first step to have those children? What is your first step to go to school? What is the first step? My Billy, I dream to go to America. Hey, go, 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 go to the immigration website and read about it. Prepare your paperwork. Tell God we are going. We are going in the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, I can give out anything in this world, but not that microwave. Mm -mm, you're joking. I can give out anything in this world, but not that microwave. Because it's the beginning of my strength. Every time I look at it, I realize that with God, all things are. God does not despise humble beginnings. But you have to step. Some things will never move. Some things will never move. They will never move until you take that first step. We have gone on lands and stood and confessed them, received them even before we had the money. And the next time they bring it to you and you have the money to buy it. By the time you went there, you only had shoes and clothes on your body. But it was the first step of taking over. Are you following what I'm saying? Before we were preaching before cameras, we went before the mirrors. You open your Bible alone when nobody's watching. You open Jeremiah and you start preaching. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you're even sweating before the, the, the oh my God, you're sweating before the mirror. After that, you bathe and put on your shoes and go to town and they find you walking like you have no destiny. But oh my God, oh my God, something has begun, it's about to be translated. So take the first step. Take the first step. Take the first step. God will sort the rest, but at least show us the first day I got my job. I woke up in the morning to go down a few, a few meters away from my home to read in the newspapers whether there was a job advertisement that I could apply for. In the middle of it, one Julian Yamahunge finds me and says, Paul, son, what are you doing here? He says, I'm, I, I told her, I'm going down with her. There's something I'm going to do down there. She asked me, do you have a job on the road? Come on now. I told her, uh, no. Tomorrow morning, come and work. That's how I got a job. I had to take that. Come on. So, that's why some of you, God will find you on the road. He, he will find you en route going one way. And he will direct you the way you're supposed to go. But begin with that first When God told Abraham, go to a place I'll show you. He didn't know anywhere. In Hebrews, the Bible says, he knew not. He says, by faith, Hebrews 11 verse 8, when he was called to go into a place which he should receive after for an inheritance, he obeyed and went out not knowing whither he went. Sometimes some inheritances carry no roadmap. They don't carry a GPRS system. You just go. And some of us have met such great inheritances. Because we made a step of going places we didn't know. But we made that first. Tell your neighbor, make your first step. Whatever you believe in God for. If it's not yet manifesting, you make the second and point back at the first. You make the third and believe in the power that made you 
take the first step. That is why I tell people, nothing, nothing strengthens me like that microwave. I don't look at the cars I have or anything I have in this world and I'm like, yeah, no. I look at that microwave and I see the power that lifted me from that boy's court. And I know with God all things are possible. I can never be broke. I can never be broke. Tell your neighbor I can never be broke. If you want to buy land, start looking in the newspapers. Look, make brokers your friends. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. There was a time we bought chairs before even the members had come. Bishop Nathan, there was a time we could buy extra chairs because it was the only way to prove to God that we have made that step. You buy extra chairs and say, Father, they will fill them. Look around and see. Do you understand what I'm saying? But you take that first step. Open your mouth and let's thank God. Open your mouth and let's thank God.